It's well understood that there are two main occasions when the business actually notices the existence of the IT department. Firstly, when a service provided by the IT department doesn't work. And secondly, when the service provided by an IT department is new or substantially altered. Unfortunately, statistically speaking, what is most likely to break an IT service is when it's new or substantially altered. This explains the existence of the life cycle phase, service transition. An attempt to actually understand, assess and mitigate the risks inherent in transitioning from one stable state to another stable state. The purpose of service transition is to simply take what was designed within the service design life cycle and ensure that it's embedded in the service operations, in the operational life cycle, as smoothly as possible, and with as few issues as possible. Everything in service transition is centred around understanding, assessing and mitigating the risks involved in this critical stage. The scope of service transition is simple. Is simple. Anything that can impact on a successful transition of an IT service should be considered. This goes beyond simple software and hardware and should include examining areas such as the wider impact on your infrastructure, how people are going to be impacted by the new services, policies, processes and even suppliers and third parties. The failure of any one of these areas can impact a service and should be considered. The processes within service transition are some of the most well understood in some cases and most esoteric in others or all of ITIL. All of them work together towards this goal of reducing the risk. Change management is probably the best known process. The objective for change management is clear. They need to understand, schedule and risk, and risk mitigate changes. I liken them to air traffic control. Their job to assess changes and make sure they go out smoothly without banging into others. Change management's big brothers are release management. You package up bundles of changes and roll those out at set times. Change evaluation assist exist to assist change management by going through and evaluating the changes, trying to anticipate what extra issues could occur, both beneficial and not. Service validation and testing ensures that there is a standardised, repeatable way of, of, of testing these changes, trying to find any issues before they hit the live environment and allow them to be addressed and mitigated. Service asset and configuration management are the librarians they exist to make sure that everybody else has a detailed understanding of how these services that they are supporting and transitioning is made up. Transition planning and support act as the overall guidance. They are the main interface between design and transition. They accept new work packages and make sure that all the people, change, release, config and everyone works together. Knowledge management is a dark art most organisations still have not understood. There is a world of difference between ensuring that the users have the knowledge to gain the benefits of the new services or are simply sent weighty documents they cannot have time to read and less interest to understand. The business value of service transition is simple. If you want to deal with higher volumes of change, faster, smoother and with reduced risk, look into service transition.